Learning the top Town Hall 12 attack strategies from YouTube is probably a pretty daunting task, but I think the best way to do that is to watch the pro players in action. This is the Clash Masters League Grand Finals for Town Hall 12. So we're not just going to see what might be the easiest strategies because we're going to see very difficult bases, but we're going to see how players actually take bases down in real wars and what better than a grand finals match between two of the top teams in the world. We have Dark Global versus Extreme Pickup. It is a super witch attack here to start us off. He was able to zap out that entire top quarter base there and the area that was removed there between the combination of the warden walk and the the lightning made so that the entire base was cleared out right there so now the super witches go directly into the town hall with no chance that they leak out any other way the king goes to the outside of the base there with the wizard and he'll form the funnel but super witches as they go through the town hall do not want to rage as you go through the town hall if at all possible don't rage because you don't want the super witches surging forward and getting hit by the blast that's even more important when you get to higher and higher Town Hall levels. But in Town Hall 12, especially, you want to make sure that you have this range when you get to the middle of the base so that you can power through whatever is ahead. In this case, one jump gives him clean access to a lot of the defenses on the rest of the base here. Everything except for that top Inferno and the Eagle Artillery. So he has a Stone Slammer on standby and he could definitely get more use out of different seed machines. Like a Flame Flayer would have been amazing to start in the top quarter at the same time that the Warden Walk started. But the rules of the tournament here say that they can only receive donations that they can produce themselves. So he drops in a stone slammer at the top. It takes a couple of black air bombs and it does get knocked open very, very quickly. Definitely a suboptimal siege machine here. And also he ran into some problems with his queen splitting off from the pack down south and lost the healing. So he's not in a perfect situation, but he still has a decent amount of time. Unfortunately, those Valkyries got wrecked. This is looking like it's going to be a defense. It was a very cleanly set up attack. But as he moves into the backside, he's kind of struggling a bit, but he's still trudging along. He's still got a baby dragon on standby. Yeah, this is a very powerful strategy. Like, even if this misses, I think with a different siege machine, I think he would normally have a very solid chance of pulling through, but he's just running into some unlucky factors on the base here. The Tesla farm around the Inferno definitely is causing a lot of problems right there and he probably could have pulled through that area of the base there with that slammer had he not run into the Tesla farm and then the Valkyries could have come out and dealt with it but he's got the rest of the base there pretty much under control so if he had an answer for that it would be a triple but it is a defense for Ayush as this one is looking like he's just gonna run out of time so very nice attempt here a very strong strategy definitely one of the best there is but it is a miss to start off this Grand Finals. Blizzard Lalo will be the next attack, and it is an anti-two-star base with the Town Hall in the middle. I assume that if he's using a Blizzard, that he wants to go after one of these side compartments and actually try to take the Town Hall down. So he invests a Lava Hound and a couple of Blooms to try to deliver this Blimp on top of the Sweeper, as I assume his targets. If he lands on top of the Sweeper, then he'll actually take the Sweeper down with the crash damage and then he'll have the Super Wizards move down this channel and go towards the Town Hall, the Eagle Artillery, and this Inferno. I'm not so worried about him targeting the Expo there, so he just makes it invisible because he'll chain backwards into it and end up taking it as collateral anyways. He claims all of his targets right there. That was some very, very nice Super Wizard value. You just gotta make sure when you do that initial drop, it takes the Wizards a little bit of time to deploy after your Spacer Troops come out. So we typically will put the Invisibility down first, then the Rage, then we start to put more Invisibility. That's the most efficient way to do it. If you claim all of your targets and you have extra Invisibility, then you can just hold on to them because you might be able to get more value out of that extra Invisibility on your Queen than on the Super Wizards. But if you need the Invisibility, you have it. So uh, for Invisibility, usually the... the, the the right number to be able to take into that but then as you see the heroes when they make their way in they have a couple other primary targets the first thing they want to do is they want to finish breaking the ring of defenses with any lalo attack let me uh, pull a paint here we're gonna draw for just a second so i can paint a picture of what we're doing so we talk about it in every single different kind of lalo attack it doesn't matter what kind of lalo attack you do but every single one, whether it be Lightning, whether it be Skelly Donut, whether it be Blizzard, whether it be whatever you're doing, you have a big chunk of the base there that was removed. Basically, a hole is punched into the middle of the base there. Then we have the heroes connect to the hole and make sure that we can 
we can have the Lalo now have a half crescent shape to go around the base here with air defense anchor points all along the way so that we can have a good spots to drop the Lava Hounds to hold tanking on the remainder of the defense as we push our way through. As a single Inferno here, so that's not going to be too big of a problem to push his way through. But it's a very strong initial setup here. He's got the ward ability. He's got still plenty of spell support. And I love to see the strategy against these anti-two-star bases. But I only like to see this strategy used against them if you're able to either secure the town hall with the heroes or secure the town hall with the with the blimp itself there when you make the drop. Otherwise, you're going to have to have the ward ability to push you through the tunnel takedown, and you have to have the balloon survive that blast. So the ward is very, very important there. So getting good blizzard value is the biggest, most important thing there, but then just breaking the ring of defense is, is absolutely crushed there. That was a very clean attack. Doesn't get much more cleaner than that. That was picture perfect blizzard Lalo at Town Hall 12. Nicely done. Now for redemption. Dark Global will be sending in a P.E.K.K.A. Super Wizard Smash attack here with lightning to take out the Expo and everything around it. Now, as this Warden Walk continues, let's make sure that everybody has the tools to maximize their lightning if you want to break it out on a base. So here's a chart while this Warden Walk continues to connect to the holders created by the lightning. Same as the other attack there. Take a screenshot of this if you don't already have it. This is a full breakdown of how many lightning it takes with a quake, with no quakes, and with two quakes for every different Town Hall level in the entire game. And that will make so that you can use the exact right amount of lightning as a quick reference there as you're trying to set up whatever attack you're going to be trying to do. There's lots of different attacks that are set up with lightning, and this one is a staple at Town Hall 12 using the P.E.K.K.A.s very similar to what we saw with the Super Witches. Using Lightning in combination with the Warden Walk to cut out a big chunk of the base there, but as long as the, the hold that's created by the Lightning is connected to by the Warden Walk, then it sets up a very clean funnel. Now, it's not a super clean funnel because, as you can see, his Queen is walking off to the left side there, and hopefully she can survive over there on her own. I think she might be okay, though. She's going to pick up some pretty solid targets, and the P.E.K.K.A.s and the Super Wizards are staying safe as the healers that were with them were able to heal them up. Make sure that you're covering the P.E.K.K.A.s and the healers, not just the P.E.K.K.A.s, but mainly the healers with the Rages so that they get the most healing possible. But Slammer comes to the right side. Obviously, the Slammer is the lesser... The, is further from ideal for this attack. If you can bring in a different seed machine to get more value, definitely do that. They are just limited to the blimp, the stone slammer, and the wall wrecker for these attacks, but this is looking very, very clean. Looks like a dragon, a couple of blues pop out of there. You can throw hogs in there. You can throw Valkyries in there, as we saw in the previous one, or you can stick with an air troop and go into dragons and balloons if, ideally, ideally, if they wanted to run an air troop and you had more options for donations, they're not allowed to receive it, but a dragon rider is also a good option if you are gonna use a stone slammer with some balloons. But it is a triple, a very, very nice, attack they're a little bit of a misplay with the queen's funnel but it's okay because she survives on the outside of the base there and it actually ended up working to his advantage so that's the triple to match the one from extreme pickup and if they can get a defense right back in this war ayush is live with lightning again another attempt at the super witches but in from the other team now this was a smaller amount of lightning used here it looks like he just took out an air defense and a cannon? Is that it? How many light does it take? Is that three or four? You'd have to go back and look at that quick reference guide there, courtesy of Corrupt Gaming on YouTube. Together there a while ago, and he updates it whenever we get some new levels added to the defenses. Usually it doesn't affect the lower level town halls though. But he just used a little bit of lightning, not very much at all. And then he uses the ward walk to connect out the trash on the outside to form the funnel, and now we can make its way in. I don't know why he decided to break out that lightning specifically, but it didn't take out any major defense, but a lot of times that's okay. Like, as long as you're getting a clean funnel and it pushes your troops where you want them to go, which it is 100% due on this base here, then using less lightning is gonna make so he has more spell support for the rest of the attack. So he pushes his way through the town hall. Notice how we had the Queen engage the Town Hall, not the Super Witches, so he's able to completely avoid the Blast. And this Queen will be stalled up on the Lava Hound for a little bit here. That's gonna 
Make her get in a little bit late. All the witches are going to the outside, but he pops the king ability and maybe can get them to redirect back into the inside. One. They can reach that storage over the wall. That's a little bit of a problem. The queen cleared out the other targets, but is there a chance they turn back? Yes, they are. Okay, one witch stayed to the outside. The rest of them are circling back in. There's other witches that are attacking walls on the inside, but his queen is still alive. For now, she hits a giant bomb and she's gone. Okay, okay, okay. Took a start a little bit today. They definitely have some small mistakes here. This one was a funnily mistake, but he still has a chance. He still has the stone slammer. We'll see what we can do on the back side. What an amazing to have a different siege machine here. This number is going to struggle a little bit. Or, uh, a battle drill would have been really cool on this attack here, right? But either way, the siege machine is going to be shot down by the defensive queen and the warden. He'll try to freeze it up there. Also seeking in the headhunter to get some damage on her. And that's not going to be enough to finish her off, though. I hope he's got Valkyries. This would be a good time for Valkyries to be in there because he would be able to take out the defensive heroes. But he instead puts in Rocka Blues. They surge all the way forward and take the Inferno with the crash damage. But it's still short on time. Okay. This just goes to show the biggest flaw with Super Witches. Now, remember, Super Witches at Town Hall 12 are the same level as Super Witches at Town Hall 14. They keep on pushing through the base for a very, very long time. But one of the biggest issues with them is time itself. And so we see another time fail with the Super Witches. And that's why I think the Super Witches, even though they're very powerful at Tunnel 12, they just keep on pushing and don't die. Because they move so slow, you a lot of times see them more often in Tunnel 13 and 14 because you have the Royal Champion that can sweep through and take out the extra buildings that are left behind at the end of the path. So just something to think about there, be as time efficient as possible with Super Witches, and anything that you can do with a Siege Machine to save some time in the backside is going to be massively beneficial. That's why a lot of people also like to run the Siege Barracks with Super Witches, because extra Wizards, extra damage, not as much time to clean up the backside. Percentage advantage is now in Dark Global's favor. Let's see if they can hold on to it now with the lead shifting. Start off with a wall breaker on the top side of the Town Hall compartment, but he kind of missed the funnel there as the Queen circles into the channel. I assume he wanted to push the Queen to go north on the base. So a little bit of a misplay in the funnel, but he can definitely make it work here. We'll just have the Queen go down this channel for now. And the King will try to cut off the pathing at the Inferno. Where's the Queen going to go, though? I think she goes into the Inferno compartment, right? Okay, this is the advantage of the Queen Charge Lalo, though. The Queen Charge Lalo, definitely the, one of the most powerful strategies in the game. But not because it's easy to do or that it's specifically more powerful than their attack. The strength of this attack comes in its adaptability. And in an attack where the Queen goes off course and goes to the wrong compartment, as long as the heal is stay safe, you can still work with this. He gets the defensive Queen down, He's going to end up attacking the wall here, and he's going to go after another Inferno. So good adaptation, and now we can put the Lalo through the Town Hall. Got to be careful, though. It'd be nice if the Slammer could go to the Town Hall. That ward ability. That's the Slammer on standby. Let's see if the Blooms will go to the Town Hall, or maybe they just pass it up here. What if they just walk on by, and he holds the Slammer to go after a little bit later on? Because it's going to activate at 51%, so... A couple blues are split out that way now, but Town Hall's about to activate. He puts the Slammer into that area, and it's going to go right in. The blues go to the Town Hall. The Slammer goes to the Town Hall, but everybody else down south is getting melted by the Molten Inferno, and he was split so many ways here with his attention that I feel like he just ended up missing the freeze that he needed for the Molten Inferno, so it's caused some problems. The Queen gets through another very important wall and will get the freeze herself to get through the Eagle Artillery. This Queen Charge is going for days. Or used a ward ability. Now the warding being left behind. He doesn't really follow siege machines very well. He doesn't really see a siege machine as something to follow, which is often a good thing if you're trying to pair him with like a flame fleet or something like that. But it becomes a problem when it's the only troop in the area for him to follow. So this one is actually looking like it's going to be a completely swag ward ability and a time fill, actually. So, good adjustment, but in the end, he needed to move a lot faster than he did. But that could swing the advantage into extreme pickup and give them the lead again if they can take advantage of it. Switching gears. It's Super Archers, one of the lesser used troops, but 
I typically see this attack used when we have lightning or bat spells tied into it. But as long as you get the Eagle Artillery and some Explos out of the way early, they are one of the few defenses on the base that can overwhelm the healing that the Super Archers would need to receive to survive. So he does a quick Queen Walk. He has the Super Archers funnel to meet up with the Queen and everybody is going to pile up and go in together. Now the Super Archers, the Queen, and the Warden have very similar reign. So as long as they stay in a group, then they will typically be able to get the healing very evenly distributed throughout them and get the entire group to survive just fine. But without the need lightning to form a funnel, he just used that blimp to form the funnel and it did a great job of that. Down on the left side, he's got the super archers shooting down the defensive super minions. And there's that portability, getting him through to the core of the base. Get that inferno out of the way here. The middle goes invisible there to protect the pack. The left side is a little bit vulnerable. No healing over there, so that defensive warden, defensive queen, could cause some problems. He goes invisible with that as well. He has his queen good ability. That'll get him through the defensive queen, and it needs to get this defensive warden down before he loses too many archers over there. Taking some heat on that left side, but he is able to power through it, and the super archers will be able to easily power through and survive over there for a moment. And we've still got a couple of buildings on the outside. We'll have a minion or something. That's why I always like to bring in a couple of minions to the attack for the outside, but he decides to throw in the wizard and the... The freeze onto that arch tower over there because he realizes that is the weakest point of his attack. He can outrange the geared up cannon. Or no, maybe he can't. Maybe he can't. But he throws in a bunch of archers over there trying to distract his targeting. And he is able to achieve that. And now he's got one more freeze for the back end of the base here. They did lose his queen. Not out of this yet. Over left side here is going to lose everything with that archer tower. That's causing some problems. Still going to get some good damage here with the Super Archers. He's got time to work with. He's got a good chance of pulling through here. And the Sealers are keeping everybody topped off. They circle around. And now the moment of truth here. Can he pull through? He's very close. The Warden takes the final strike at that Arch Tower. Steps his way to the last couple defenses. He can swag the freeze. The Super Archers get it done. That was a very cool attack. I got to admit, that was a very cool attack. And it's a triple. And it's a lead back in the favor of Extreme Pickup. A shift to the skies. It is dragons for the next one. A queen charge dragon attack where a lot of people would say that the top dragon attacks for Tile 12 are the Zap Dragon and the... I guess you could use Blizzard Dragon, you could use Zap Dragon, you could use Queen Charge Dragon. There's a lot of different dragon attacks there, but I think the Lightning version is one of the strongest. However... This queen is already going off the rails here as she completely skips out of the air defense near the entry point and Tesla's continue to pop and draw her north. We need to find a solution to this. At least he's able to get the healers to safety and they're going to be okay for just a moment. He wall breaks the king at the top of the base. There pops his ability. More Tesla's are popping. Queen. Oh, queen. Come on. <laughs> What is the queen doing? These queens, I tell you what. They are off the rails today. But at least he's able to reach that defensive queen with his queen. So his king is just going to take over the healers and he will continue the charge himself. He has one healer remaining and he's in a little bit of a bind now. He puts an electro dragon down south to form the other side of the funnel. So now, as we push our way in, you can see the lane that is created. Even though the queen didn't go exactly where he intended, she still is able to reach all the way across the top of the base. She was clearly supposed to be in the channel that she is in now, but she would have had Helix intact there had all those problems not occurred. But he will push the dragons through the slammer, working with the dragons. He had a very clean funnel there. Only one dragon ends up splitting off from the main pack there and will stay behind. And all other dragons are gonna push north there with the warden. Has a little bit of a chance here, but he is starting to dwindle out. Um, a big fan of when they can get the Eagle Artillery down much earlier in the attack than he did here. And that's going to be a problem that I don't know if they can overcome. I think that Queen really did him dirty there. And it uh, would have been very important for her to survive into the backside of the attack. But I think he might have been in a tough spot either way. I'm not sure. He definitely needed the Dragons to transition off of the Town Hall, but he was kind of relying them on too big of a split. So as he came off of the middle of the base there, like you can see that the funnel that he had created was like that, right? So as he came off, he had to have dragons split off in good enough numbers to go over there, but he also needed dragons to go off in good enough 
numbers to go down to the Eagle Artillery. So as the Queen continued in, the King did what he was supposed to do up there. And you can see how the plan was supposed to go. But that Queen did not go where she was supposed to initially. And it may or may not be the cause of the fail. I'm not sure. But it is a miss. And that's a big miss there when Extreme Pickup has the lead. Queen Charge and Lalo will be our next attack. I assume if he has four lightning, then he wants to take out an Inferno. And then if he's going to pair it with a Queen Charge, then he'll probably want to use that as a funneling point to wrap around the Inferno. So the right side Inferno has the most value. So he'll spread out the lightning and try to take as much as he can there and maybe take out more out of that. He gets a couple of buildings weakened out there. I think it would have been largely beneficial to get that defensive warden deck because the warden at Town Hall 12 and higher hits really hard. At Town Hall 11, you can almost ignore him. He's, he's, that's basically why we don't do warden walks at Town Hall 11 because the warden does so little damage. But between the level 30 and 40, his damage ramps up massively. And so he becomes a very real threat here to the queen charge and it could cause some problems here if he's not careful, but he'll freeze up as he charges into the single inferno. Reach from the outside of the base there, strangely enough. But he'll make his way around and he will go in and he can reach the Eagle Artillery from this department. See now a base here. I mean, definitely some, some slight flaws there in the spacing of the walls to be able to make that inferno reachable from the outside, but that's hard to identify right there. So most people wouldn't even realize it unless they were charging that compartment anyways. So it kind of is okay. But he'll have the CC come out now. He needs to get the poison out of the super minions. It's going to cause a lot of damage. He's able to span the poison between the archers and the super minions. Are they inside of it? They are, aren't they? Okay, they'll step forward now. He gets the Eagle Artillery down. Super Wall Breaker again to go in. But that Eagle Artillery on its last right hit the healers. And now the healers are at very, very low HP. And he may end up losing every single one of them if a single red air bomb goes off. A little bit unfortunate. That's the way it goes. He does have the Queen ability that can potentially carry him through this single. And I don't know if he can reach the Town Hall from here. He might be able to reach it. He can definitely reach the single. He locks out of the Town Hall. All right, but he lost all the healers. The healers did end up going down. But now he's at a potential one-star risk. What? <laughs> all right, this might swing the war. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tries to take advantage of it, but the Eagle Artillery ring to have. He pops the ward of building trying to save it. Hopefully he's going to the town hall though. Lambert's still intact though. He still has whatever's inside of it. And it does go that way. That might be the difference of the war here. It looks like Rocket Blues have come out and they should have enough with their crash damage that even if they die, they would be able to take it out. And it is going to be a two star at least. But it is a big defense right there. That was a nice charge. I, you got to admit, that was a very nice charge. Really good base identification. There were a lot of flaws in that base. We really, need to make, we really need to make sure when you're building a base that you go through and you check all the spacings for all the different buildings. You, would, you never want major defenses to be able to be reached from an adjacent compartment, especially a big compartment. Like, if your Town Hall, your Inferno, your Eagle Artillery, all of that is reachable from the same compartment, then you have a big problem. That base, while it did hold, should be tossed out or redesigned to fix all those spacing issues. Now that gives a big opportunity for Dark Global to get into the lead and swing this war back in their favor. It's a Skelly Donut using the skeleton spells and an invisibility spell that is placed three to three and a half tiles away from the target so that it covers the skeletons but does not cover the buildings that he's trying to target. If you destroy the CC building with the skeleton spells, which skeletons of bass cannot pull the CC, then you make so that the the troops that were inside of it can no longer deploy. That's going to make so that the heroes are not going to get stalled up. But just like we saw in the other attacks there, the reason we call this a Skelly Donut, and really you could call the lightning attack to Zap Lalo, you could call it a lightning donut, you could call the other one a super wizard donut, you could call, you can make a lot of things a donut. I think that's very important. That's a, just a good lesson in life in general. But <laughs> with the base having a section removed there by the lightning, 
then the heroes need to take a bite out. They need to connect to the area that was hit by whatever you used to create the hole. They connect from the outside of the base there to the hole created, and now the Lalo will have a nice clean path. It's the same principle as we saw before. We want to make sure that we have air defenses all along the path there if we're going to do a Lalo, because we want to make sure we have anchor points for our lava hounds. But the slammer drops to the top of the base there, goes after that first multi-inferno, and he will be ending onto the defensive queen and the multi, but if you pay attention here, the ideal approach with all these ground expos being able to snipe off these headhunters to make their way through, the best way to make this work is to freeze the town hall in the approach and then drop in the headhunters to get protected by the warden ability as he passes through it. Then they will not die to the ground expos. They will survive with the warden ability's protection and they will take out the backside defensive queen. He has a heal spell to absorb all these red air bombs that are gonna hit all of his balloons. Lucky that he has that there. And now he'll haste his way into the Multi Inferno, and that will put the pressure on. The last war of this series will decide the Grand Finals. A tool gets it done. A picture perfect Skelly Donut into Lalo. That was flawless. All the fundamentals attacked there. He 100% deserves the triple on that one, and that can potentially get them to war. Iron Man himself, Tony Stark is live it's an anti two-star base and it is going to be zap which is my favorite attack in all of town hall 12 and it's not the ordinary way that we would do this attack this one looking like he's going to zap out everything to connect to where the ward is going in but he'll leave the eagle artillery up he'll leave the infernos up and since this is a single he can work with this he takes out one inferno with the lightning and he puts some heavy damage onto the defensive queen. Not enough to actually take her down. But if the warden connects to the hole that was created by the lightning, then the witches can begin their path into the base here. Now, this is a very, very important note here because he's not doing it like we would typically do as zap witches. Usually when we do as zap witches, we just find whatever multi infernos are on the base. We zap them out there with four lightning to quake, and we hit everything around them whenever possible. And then we just send in a broadside of witches with like a wall of our carrot or log launch but this one since he does have the town hall that is islanded off a little bit there from the the edge of that compartment everything else in that compartment is reachable from the outside of the base so if he clears everything on the right side then he should be able to have everything stay to the outside of this base but they may go in with the wall wrecker going in okay that's what i expected there i thought maybe he'd try to get them to all walk the loop and circle around the outside of the base and not go into the town hall compartment. But luckily, witches, they move so slow that as long as they're not under a rage, they do not step forward into the town hall blast. So he tries to reduce some of the damage there with that invisibility and let these healers catch up for just a little bit. He needs to cross 80% here to lock in the win. It's still moving decently strong, but on the outside of the base there, the witches are getting mowed down by this bomb tower, which is really painful. He eventually powers through it. He still has a solid chance there. Still has a queen ability. The queen can reach almost everything that matters the most here. And I think he's got it under control. Okay, he's quickly climbing the percentage up. And okay, it's a triple. It's a win. Extreme Pickup is going to claim this Grand Finals victory for the Clash Masters League. They smashed it out of the park, guys. 13 stars, very solid performance, 60% hit rate. That's where we want to be hitting here at Town Hall 12. And they had some good attacks all the way through. But I do want to quickly talk about how I think that was supposed to go, even though it didn't go the way I was thinking. Because a lot of times when we see these ring bases at Town Hall... 12, 13, 14, 15. There is a specific way that people like to throw in. Like, it's just like it switches, technically. But it was performed the same as a zap smash attack. Like, you could have done that with super witches. You could have done that with the P.E.K.K.A.s and the super wizards. You could have done it with any smash attack there. But a lot of times when we see the attacks performed like that with the town hall not reachable from the outside, what you can do is, and I think it's why he had the blimp selected at the initial part of the attack here, because if he was able to use the lightning to take out that, the warden takes out that, that, that doesn't look good. Uh, <laughs> if he does use the warden to connect to the lightning, then what you end up being able to do is have the witches, if they can get into this channel 
and just move along here, then they can reach everything over the walls. They can then just march around the base and you can have the blimp sail through and secure the town hall. But if the wall wrecker was like timed a little bit later, then he would have been able to have the wall wrecker go in and secure the town hall without the risk of black air bombs taking out like a blimp. And he could have secured the town hall with whatever's inside of it. And then he could have had the witches just stay away from the blast altogether. That's how we like to see this attack done. I think that's what he intended to have happen there, but the wall wrecker came a little bit early and it pushed everybody into the middle of the base. And it worked out fine because they still got the win. So it has a little bit of wiggle room there, very clearly. But it is a win, very nice job here from Extreme Pickup. They are the Clash Masters League Grand Finals Town Hall 12 for Gay Champions. <laughs> yeah, let's not draw that. All right. <laughs> you guys are horrible. You guys are horrible. Oh, man. Banned? No, don't, don't ban me. Don't cancel me. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> Tony Stark is my witch rival. This is true. <laughs> 